All right, one of the downsides being in California, your cameras overheat, so who knew? Welcome guys, so um, I came out here to our new car because one of our pumps is, something's happening to it, I don't know what's going on, so I thought this might be a great time to show you what actually my feeding system looks like because, well, it's broken, I have to be out here, so I might as well, and I've been really busy lately, so it's hard. I know a lot of you've been asking me, like, tell us about your feeding system, but I've just been busy, so. Uh, so I gotta put my veil on because they worked with the hives today and they're not happy with me. So let me show you what's going on here. So basically this is the control controller, this is the PLC, and then we have mainly batteries. We have two batteries, lead acid, and then we have an uh, accumulator. We have a small RV pump. It's a 12 volt system. Uh, we have a pressure sensor and then we have totes, okay? Then what happens is the syrup gets pumped by the, uh, by the pump. It gets pumped into here so I can pump, uh, this is a hydraulic compensator. So basically it pumps it up to 40 PSI and then I let it drop to 12 PSI. And then once it drops below 12 PSI, it pumps it back back up. So because we're running on solar, we don't want to turn the pump on and off again because that is the most power hungry out of this whole system. So we want to minimize that. So we use a hydraulic compensator. It basically has a bladder uh, and air on the other side. So I can, when the system's full, when it pumps it up to 40 PSI and when it drops down to 12, I can actually pump two and a half gallons without turning the pump on, without turning the pump on. So it becomes very efficient. So once, once uh, the pump turns it on, it pumps it through the lines. The lines are underneath. So these are half inch push to connect lines. They're nomadic, but you know, I use them. They work. I'm sure there's better systems out there, but that's what I got right now. So under, under the ground, we have somewhere around here, they break off and they go into three quarter inch lines. Uh, so the, these are quarter inch lines and they come into here and right here, there's a float valve. So the float valve pumps, uh, pumps it in and it stops it. So as you can see, it stops it right in the middle. And then gravity wise, these get filled up and then there's just mesh netting in here. And so that's it. So the main pump pumps it up. It brings a high pressure line into here. This is the high pressure would be. And then the valve, the float valve would keep it about halfway. And that's it, it just fills them up. And the bees go into here, so these are our nukes. So there's three chambers in here and they get, they all get fed. All right, let's go see what's going on with my pump. And if you guys want to know a little bit more about this, this is a Click PLC with custom software written in it. Um, this is a solar controller. So that's the solar panel. So when this is down, the solar panel goes up. This is a 12, 12 volt to 24 volt step up for the PLC. And this is the relay to turn the, the pump on. This is the fuse for it, and this is just the junction wiring to make it all work together. I could miniaturize this, but at the end of the day, this works. So I've made several of them because yes, I could do it with an Arduino, I can do it with embedded uh, processors, but at the end of the day, what really matters is that this works. And I knew it worked, so I just bought a bunch more of them and I made more of them. So I updated the firmware on this thing. Hopefully that solved the problem with it. Um, so normally, you know, if we need to inter interface with this guy, what we have is a touch panel. Once again, there are much better ways of doing this, but this is how I knew how to do it. So we have a couple of menus here. So basically we have a couple of menus. We have time of day to start. So usually this one is going to start at 10. Back to the main menu, 
amount, amount of time to feed. So this is going to run for seven hours. And then we have feed manager. So it tells you the battery voltage, uh, time to feed in minutes, because that's what the PLC uses. And then we can manually start or stop this. So let's go ahead and start it. So once the pump is running, it'll actually tell you what the PSI is in the system. And that's coming from that sensor. And there's pretty cool things that it does. When I first built the system, I was thinking, okay, how do I know if I run out of syrup? Because I don't want to pump, or I don't want to run the pump dry or just waste energy if there's no syrup. So my first ones was using ultrasonic uh, sensors. So what an ultrasonic sensor is, uh, it bounces radio waves into, uh, into the tote and then it measures what the distance is. Now, in a factory, that works great. But if you're a beekeeper, you know it's never that easy. So what, ha what started happening was uh, these totes sit in the heat. So when the, when the sun heats it, this starts to move. And so when the sensor was in here, it would move. And when it would move, the radio frequencies would bounce at a different angle. And then it would think that it has, so these are only 250 gallons. So it would say, oh, I have 300 gallons or I have negative 20 gallons. Uh, it was not consistent. So uh, one of the ways that in the industry, how they solve the problem of like, let's say if the liquid's moving is they put it inside of a tube. Um, so I did that. I try, I put it inside of a three inch PVC tube. That way this, this guy can sit and then the inside the tube, it can be, you know, whatever angle it is and it'll still read the correct amount. Well, what started happening was uh, the difference, the, the temperature difference between uh, the tote, the outside, and the tube was too much. And it would start, condensation would start building up inside of the tube. And then the radio frequency, or the frequencies would also get messed up from it. So I would get weird readings I get from it. So that didn't work either. Um, so I was trying, I was trying to put vents on them so it aired out. And then it hit me one time. It was like, well, why do I actually need to know how much liquid I have here. Um, I also tried a float valve, that didn't work to see if I'm out. Uh, basically, I just needed to know if I'm out or not. So I was thinking about it one day as I'm driving, is that, wait a minute, if I have no pressure, if I have no liquid, the pump will pump, and if it's not reading any pressure, either my pump is broken, I don't have liquid, or my sensor's out. So I was like, wait a minute, so I can get rid of all that. So now, if I'm not, if the pump is pumping and it counts for one minute that the pressure is not above three pounds, it just turns it off for the day. And then it'll try it tomorrow again. So even if like you ran out of syrup, you don't have to restart the system. You just fill it up and the next morning it'll restart. So it makes it as easy as possible to have the system. So things like that, just R&D, they get worked out. Um, the system's running now. Let's see what it's at. Uh, it's around 23, 23 PSI. So it's gonna pump it up to 40 PSI and then it'll stop. Well, hopefully it'll stop. So, so far it's been working great. Um, we have one, two, I think I have five right now running like that. Um, I am planning to upgrade it. Um, I'm planning to put this like inside of a small container. I have a 10 foot uh, shipping container that where I could just bring this, drop it off and it's good, it's secure. This is not so secure. I mean, the location is fairly secure, but you know, it's, you never know. Um, but yeah, so far it's looking great. Um, I'm planning to add data, data logging onto it. Um, I know how much the pump is pumping, how much it can pump per, like, per time wise. Um, so I can calculate per day how much it's feeding. So data logging is gonna be incorporated in the next uh, variation of it. Um, but like I said, you know, for right now, at the end of the day, you know, it might just get it done. So like right now, 
like if we don't have the system running, um, if we have a time to set up, like all of those have uh, valves on top of them so we can open them up and we can feed them with bottles. Because like I said, at the end of the day, all that matters is just get them to feed. Okay, um, that was a short overview of it. Um, if you guys want to know more details, like, you know, let me know because I don't know how much this is all interesting. To me, it's, I love it. So I don't have to come out here every day. I, I mean, I came out here once when we installed it and I think another time to feed it because one of my guys was busy moving bees. So it's a fantastic time saver. Um, this was my basically first crack at a, well, this is my second version. My first version was on tubes that didn't really work. It was very, it was too much. It had to be level. These guys, you know, uh, they just have to be level. The pallet relatively has to be level to itself. So I am working on the version three. Uh, some of you guys know that that follow me on um, Instagram. Um, it's just, it's taken a long time. Like I need to, I'm building a CNC router. Uh, I'm building other things. Then I'm also like, you know, I'm also all, only working on projects. So I decided to get a Jeep and see how uh, doing some off-roading with a friend so that's got me involved um, we just got a new forklift that's going to be a hassle because they never quite make it the way we want it to be so now here's the here's the pump so it hit 40 psi for a split second and then it turned it off so now all it's pushing is that diaphragm inside of it so hopefully it's going to drop all the way down I'm probably not going to stay that long. The battery voltage dropped to 12.2. It's not reading real time. It's there's like a 30 second delay because uh, when the pump is running, it'll just jump all around. Yeah, so it jump up to 12.5 again. I'll probably do some better coding for that, but and it'll it'll start dropping down. So right here, uh, this is. Uh, time to feed so we're gonna run for 420 minutes and now it's been running for uh, nine minutes so that's it so watching the psi drop making sure that a pump turns itself back on um i had a question before of how long does it take to fill the system um basically about 10 minutes uh so if you're not if you haven't turned the system on yet um, 10 minutes so we got this this pump so this is in the lock box they're all locked together with ties so all of those and this is one of our smallest yards so usually we have like this is we consider this like three locations by how many how many look like i think we pallets of 23 or something like that i don't know i don't i don't do the math for the queens um but this is this is three, and we have our largest one is twelve, all in one pump. No problem. It doesn't. It just takes a little longer to pump it through. But yeah. So let's see what's what's it at right now. Fifteen. It's gonna start dropping really, really slow. Oh, there we go. Can you hear the pump turn back back on? I have modified the. Um, it has pushed the connects directly connected into it because otherwise I would need an adapter on top of adapter and adapter and I hate that and there's a special little something inside to make it so that the uh, the head pressure on these uh, they don't um, they don't push the fluid just through the pump actually have physically has to there's a special valve inside that I built but like I said if you guys are interested I'll go more into it um, yeah so it looks like it's working I'm gonna let it pump up again one more time and then turn it off so that it's working with solar for tomorrow. Looks like it just needed a firmware flash. But I also brought a backup. If I needed to, I could just change the whole thing out. Yep, there we go. So the first time it ran quite a bit longer because the system was empty. Oh, and one more thing. The reason this is so dim right now is that this is all being powered from the PLC. So I want to just plug that one wire in. I'm going to go ahead and turn the system off for today. Um, it's all being powered by this guy. So if I, if you want 
the bright screen, you have to plug in uh, a power accessory to it, anywhere from 12 to 24. But hey, it works for me. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.